I do think everyone in life needs a nemesis, you know, like Superman and Bizarro Superman. Hmm? Nancy Pelosi is subtle about many things. How she feels about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and other young, high-profile liberals in Congress, it isn't one of them. Here's Pelosi to the New York Times' Maureen Dowd in early July about AOC and her liberal allies, quote, All these people have their public whatever and their Twitter world, but they didn't have any following. They're four people, and that's how many votes they got. Ooh, doggy! <laughs> Pelosi was talking specifically about Ocasio-Cortez's failure to support a Democratic leadership-backed immigration measure, which the New York Democrat, as well as fellow freshman firebrands, Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts led the opposition to. During the immigration debate, AOC insisted that President Donald Trump and congressional Republicans couldn't be trusted with spending the money that Congress was going to allocate. Quote, I don't believe it was a good idea for Dems to blindly trust the Trump admin when so many kids have died in their custody, Ocasio-Cortez tweeted in early July, adding, it's a huge mistake. This admin also refuses to hand over docs to Congress on the whereabouts of families. People's lives are getting bargained. And for what? End of quote. Now in a vacuum, you might dismiss Pelosi's punch and AOC's clapback as the sort of occasional difference of opinion that happens in a majority party where not everyone agrees all the time on the right strategy to deal with a president as abnormal as Donald Trump. But this didn't happen in a vacuum. Pelosi's willingness to throw shade at AOC and the freshman phenom's willingness to sling it back is a feature, not a glitch, of their already fraught relationship. Now it all began on Ocasio-Cortez's first day as a member elect in Congress. On that day, it was November 13, 2018, AOC participated in a sit-in in, in Pelosi's office organized by an environmental group called Sunrise Movement. Quote, should Leader Pelosi become the next Speaker of the House, we need to tell her that we've got her back in showing and pursuing the most progressive energy agenda that this country has ever seen, Ocasio-Cortez told the assembled protesters. Now, Pelosi didn't say much at the time, but she clearly didn't take kindly to Ocasio-Cortez's first act on Capitol Hill. So, how did the Speaker respond? Well, AOC didn't get the seat on the powerful Ways and Means Committee that she wanted and that Crowley had previously held. Then, in early February, one day before AOC's signature Green New Deal, a package of legislation aimed at radical structural change of how government approaches climate change, was officially introduced into Congress, Pelosi gave an interview to Politico, where she uh, definitely cast some shade. Quote, it will be one of several or maybe many suggestions that we receive, said Pelosi of the Green New Deal proposal, adding, quote, the Green Dream, or whatever they call it, nobody knows what it is, but they're for it, right? End quote. <laughs> oh, the Green Dream. Woo, God, those were good times. Now, Pelosi was not done. In fact, she was far from it. In an interview with USA Today in April, Pelosi was asked about the challenges of governing a majority party where a group of young liberals led by Ocasio-Cortez were regularly challenging her strategy. Responded Pelosi, quote, while there are people who have a large number of Twitter followers, what's important is that we have large numbers of votes on the floor of the house, end quote. Now Pelosi didn't name names there, but who could she be talking about? Who, who? Maybe AOC and her 4.68 million Twitter followers? Mystery solved. Sidebar, Nancy Pelosi has 2.66 million Twitter followers. She and AOC have more Twitter followers than any other members of Congress. Congrats, and sidebar. But wait, there's even more. Asked about AOC and her group in an interview with CBS's Leslie Stahl, Pelosi said drolly, quote, that's like five people, end quote. Why all the animosity, you ask? Well, consider AOC and her Green New Deal from Pelosi's perspective. Pelosi has been fighting these fights for liberals for the better part of the last four decades. She was first elected to a San Francisco congressional seat way back in 1987. Well, suddenly, here comes AOC, the now 29-year-old, very junior member of Congress, who wants the party's leaders to immediately listen to and adopt her ideas. Pelosi, in her own mind, has been leading the charge for liberal ideas and affecting change on them longer than AOC has been alive, literally longer than she's been alive. 
So Pelosi doesn't need to take instructions on how to run the house from someone who has spent a grand total of six months in said house. The not at all subtle message Pelosi is sending to AOC and her ilk is this. You may be a big star in the Twitter sphere, but in Congress, I'm the boss. You don't have to like that reality, but until you figure out a way to beat me, you do have to live with it. Which is, technically speaking, true. While AOC isn't the only liberal unhappy with the border funding deal Pelosi cut, 95 Democrats wound up voting against it in the House, neither the New York Congresswoman nor anyone else in her wing of the party have the power or even close to the power within the House to oust Pelosi. Because if they did, they might have already tried that move. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.